again. Right, uh, been doing loads of bits and bobs on the Fiesta, so I thought I'd do another quick video to update where we're at. Uh, basically, if I start off by showing you, I don't know if I, you've seen this before, made a little bracket for my header tank to pop it over here. By the time you've got the turbos and stuff, that's like the only real bit of space I've got left in the engine bay. Um, and I want to try and keep everything off the inner wings again. So, um, yeah, that's all kind of mocked up and ready to go. I've also made this funky uh, bracket for the alternator, which is about half the weight of the original one, which is way overkill. Ford had decided to uh, cast it out of a big old lump of um, steel, so this is just a um, 5 mil plate riddled with holes again, all TIG welded up. So get that all powder coated up and then that'll be ready to bolt on. Uh, yeah, and then where else are we at with the rest of the car? Taking all the back axle off with the intention of putting stub axles on it. Got a new uh, hydraulic release bearing for the 6 b gearbox that you would have seen in the last video. Uh, Zach and I put in the differential in it. And I've also got new output seals which are genuine Ford ones, so I'll be putting them in when I put the gearbox in and take the old IB5 gearbox out. I've also bought a uh, Berg Cup style front splitter, which I've just kind of bodged on, bodged on even with a couple of screws, just to offer it up and see how much work it's going to take to get it to fit properly. I'm going to have to cut it about a bit, jiggery pokery, bit of fiberglass, um, and get that sort of a little, little bit more snug against the front panel. I've also gone and obtained a set of starlet arches off of uh, Stiggy, who um, drifts an old KP starlet, and he actually makes these out of uh, carbon fiber, and these are an early set of fiberglass ones that he's done. And I've just been sort of offering up uh, the arches to see if I can uh, chop them about, again, a bit of fiberglass, um, a bit of messing about, cutting and shutting, and I reckon I can get them to fit pretty well. So yeah, this should be a bit different if I can get it to work. But yeah, always fancy a challenge. The back arches are mahoosive. So again, gonna need a bit of cutting around. Gonna have to get rid of this swage line because that lines up with the starlet side. Um, and then reshape it down the bottom so that it hugs the side of the Fiesta a bit better. Um, other than that, I've stripped out all of the sound deadening, uh, like tar matting from all around the car, just to save a bit of weight. And we've also fitted new lower springs on the back, uh, courtesy of Outlaw Motorsport. And here's the boot shroud that I've been making up to mount this radiator. So the radiator is going to go in, uh, mount on top of that, and then I'm going to have the shroud that then covers the front of the uh, radiator core, a couple of 73 mil pipes outlet, and then that's going to come up. And as I said, have NACA ducks in the window is the uh, is the plan. But yeah, I've made this out of Fomex just as a template. Uh, cut it out, and it's sort of quite a nice little fit. It's got sides to it, and kind of follows the contour of the boot. And a bit of neoprene. I'll get this drawn up, uh, laser cut it out of aluminium and then fold it all up, TIG weld it all up, and then it will all bolt in and it will be a removable piece and obviously then all the air goes out through the slots that I cut in the back panel is the plan. This is my crazy cage inlet manifold which has got oval uh, trumpets or oval inlet tracks and it's got big oval trumpets inside the plenum. I've uh, given it a coat of crinkled black to match the rocker cover and the turbos. Rebuilt the cosy calipers so they're nicely painted a nice retro shade of gold. Uh, new pistons, seals and I get some new bleed nipples for them so they're easy to uh, set up. So this is my new clutch and uh, flywheel assembly. I got it from uh, At Speed and it's uh, uprated cover, paddle plate and then a billet steel flywheel which is a CNC work of art. All the cutouts for the CPS on the back. So uh, these clutches are rated to I think 350 foot pound of torque but apparently they've seen a lot more so it should be more than enough for what I'm going to throw for it. 
Hello, right, I thought I'd just quickly show you my place of work, which is um, Camberley Signs, and uh, I'll explain and show you some of the bits and bobs I've been making, fabricating, welding, uh, using our new CO2, well, it's brand new second hand CO2 laser and new brake press, three metre bed. Um, yeah, basically, with the boot shroud stuff, obviously, I did the templating out of Fomex, we now laser cut out of 2.5mm alley, folded it all up, we've got uh, some points here that I can mount fans on the back and it's obviously all contours to the back of the car where I've got those uh, big sausage holes in it and this will all bolt down to the floor in the boot and on the back lip of where the boot shuts and then onto that I've got a charge cooler rad that I got off Zach and that will bolt onto this. I'm just folding up some brackets now. We've got a load of these little brackets. Folding them up using the little in-vice brake press to get to this. So this will be welded onto here and then I'll have a corresponding one on here. Then onto that, I've got my funnel shroud with little tabs on. I've machined some, they're upstairs. I've machined some little threaded collars that I'm going to TIG weld onto here in six points and this should in theory just slip over the top like that with a bit of neoprene around the edge to seal it all up and I've got big old pipes that are going to connect to the vents that are in the windows once they're in and obviously I've got to re-weld these on the, as the inlet and the outlet or vice versa so that's that taking shape pretty uh, crazy contraption yeah big up ryan for um helping me fold that stuff up because i don't actually know how to use the brake press here's the pedal box i'm going to be using it came off of uh, martin's blue mark one fiesta uh, obviously his was a left-hand drive uh, car being it, that he's from the netherlands uh, this has been fitted, I believe, in, I can't remember what his name was, it was a blue Mark II turbo-powered uh, track car. So it has been mounted in a Fiesta before, and I've got a couple of reference photos of how they've done it. But um, I'm loosely, re like, loosely mounting it how Martin did it. So this is the sort of cowling shroud that covers the steering column that comes down into the bulkhead. Um, I've actually notched it back, you can see here, how much material I've taken away um, in this area and I've got a couple of M8 bolts that hold this side of it on. This is going to be the reinforcement plate for the bulkhead and I've already uh, spot weld drilled out the existing plate uh, and then this whole crazy gubbins here I've um, made up and laser cut out. I'm just going to TIG weld this all up and this holds the other side of the um, pedal box and my um, throttle pedal in there. So yeah, once this is welded into the car, then this will all bolt through in the same manner that the original uh, pedal box mounted. Uh, and then this is all sort of original, albeit apart from that notch out. And the reason, aside from the fact that it's got bigger brake cylinders and I'm not running a servo in the engine bay, uh, for running a pedal box like this is for the hydraulic clutch, which I need on the six speed ST170 gearbox that I'm putting in it. Simple as that. Right, just down at Powers again with uh, Zach. He's going to be rolling up some bits on the uh, radiator that I've made and do the inlets and stuff because he's a little bit better at those sort of fiddly bits than I am. Uh, I'm just doing him a favour and he's mounting this anti-roll bar on the back of his Escort. So he's got it all mounted with the collars machined up to go through the chassis rails so that when you tighten them up they don't crush the box. And then I've just templated this uh, uh, cardboard bracket there uh, to pick up on the rose joint, so I'll cut this all out of 3mm, we'll tick it all up and weld it all onto the um, lower arm and then he should have a uh, stiffer rear end and he's also drilled further in on the um, arms to make it that much more stiffer. So I've just drawn around my templates, I'm going to just centre punch it, drill it and then angle grind it, cut it out and weld it all together and then weld it all onto the lower arms, job done. Drilling the nipples out.
doing it, FFI.com lots to use a drill vice, an angle <laughs> yeah. driver. What? What's wrong with my time um, workbench? Seems to be working perfectly for me. It makes me sick practice. Sorry? You know this isn't quite folded. No, it'll pull itself in though. I'm just checking, just checking, you know. So that's the uh, bracket all mocked up. Just going to tack it up and then uh, weld it onto the lower arm. Who needs a laser when well, you've got an angle grinder? Yeah? Yeah. Fucking... Straight enough. Yeah, chicken ding, I reckon. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, alright. And then, yeah, that one looks weird because it's not at the yeah. right height on the right. Yeah. On the face. That'd be alright. They're exactly the same, isn't they? As long as we get the roughly in the right place. Zach's crazy uh, exhaust with the little pea shooter out the back and the three inch side slash cut. Looks jokes off the car. So Zach's just welded on the inlet and the outlet on my uh, charge cooler rad. And then he's also cut these uh, little union or mounting points that I machined up on the lathe uh, to fit the shroud over. So that's all taking shape. That's the finished little bracket. Little notch out the top so the rose joint won't foul on it. Just gonna mig them on and then give it a quick rattle can and uh, probably call it a night. So yeah, those of you who watched the, uh, the Dan ST170 install, uh, I hacked up the ends of my axle uh, with the intention of putting some ST170 or Focus stub axles and discs and calipers and stuff on this. Uh, it also will give me the ability to shim it and put some camber in it and adjust the caster if needs be, or sorry, the toe in and that, if needs be. So I've had these plates cut out. Uh, and then we, um, after I cut that off, we then had a steel Carlo machine as a steel insert, which presses in to the axle tube. Uh, and then we drilled it, um, we've plug welded it, Zach's TIG welded all of this. So now we've got this flat mating face with a little peg and then our plate aligns onto that. We'll knock that on, weld in here and then all the way around the outside. Um, and I've also just put a little reference line as a horizontal line as to where I want it to be. Um, so hopefully we get both, both plates kind of sitting where they need to be is the plan. So we'll see how we get on. Carlo, the engineer, has also um, engineered or machined up on his lathe a little Preston insert. So now I've got a, a much better throttle pedal with a bolt through. And I've also um, cut these out. I'm going to drill and tap that, weld that onto there, run a bolt through, and then that will give me my um, full throttle stop adjustment. Um, but obviously I need to get that back in the car before I uh, work out where that is. And then I've got to make up a crazy top piece because the throttle cable comes through the bulkhead around about here. So, spin it around to what, where it's going to be. I need to do like a welded on S shape with the uh, hole in to take the cable when it comes through. But yeah, the pedal box is really taking shape now. And then weld this plate in to the bulkhead where I've uh, spot well drilled out the original strengthening plate and also make up a bracket on top that still needs to be done okay so uh, last night when we tried to put these stub axle brackets onto the axle I don't think the little pegs are long enough and I was having difficulty kind of getting it all true and aligned and I was kind of hoping we could just whack them on and they'd all kind of self locate but I'm obviously worried that if we weld them on slightly on the piss then I'm gonna have like already before I even start the wrong amount of camber or the wrong amount of toe in. So back to the drawing um, board, we've come up with this sort of idea. 
to make a jig. So it's basically 50 by 50 box um, with some corresponding plates threaded and then we can weld all this up, make sure this is all true, parallel, vertical um, and then we just got to get the axle in the middle of it, align it all with the plates kind of resting on it, bolt the plates to it and once we're happy that everything's where it should be, then start welding up the plates onto the axle and then hopefully we've got our wheel hubs running perfectly parallel as they should be before we start shimming it or doing anything with it. Um, but as I said, I didn't want to sort of rush it and end up with an issue later on and find out that when we put the laser alignment tools on the car, all the wheels are on the piss. So yeah, this will be tonight's little task, just welding all this up, making sure it's all square. So just welding up the jig, um, I'm using other bits of box section as Ryan recommended to try and keep everything square when I tack weld it up, not put too much heat in it because otherwise it'll end up bananaing all over the place. Uh, yeah, sort of really concentrating on trying to make sure this is all as straight as I can get it. Mint. That's it all welded up, uh, just done a couple of stitch welds. Um, pretty much there. I'm just going to uh, let it cool down and then take it over and offer it up with the axle and the uh, end plates. Okay, so back down at Powers with Zaki Poo and uh, got the jig now. Just going to offer up the axle and see that it doesn't fit. Well, hopefully it will fit. And then we can get these uh, end plates welded on, get it all powder coated and get everything back on the car so it's a rolling shell. No? No. No, mate. Never gonna happen. <laughs> you ain't getting that bracket on today, mate. Plates go on there, locate really, really tight, too tight. And then the whole assembly is gonna go in between the two posts. And then we can level it off. Uh, and then weld it up. Easy as that. Cut things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done. The death beam jig. <laughs> look at the look at the fitment. So now we need it to be around a the boot there, I reckon and then weld her up. Just blob it in. Stacking dimes. Just welded the uh, plate to the little pin, so I don't think that's going anywhere. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed. As always, uh, make sure you check out all of the Zoo Speed merchandise and stuff that we're selling. We're going to be putting some new FBE stuff, some branded hats, and uh, start designing a funky little Mark 1 Fiesta logo to put on some t shirts and stuff. So that'll be up on the store soon. I'll put the link in the bio below. Also, again, just a reminder that I do write for Classic Ford and cover all the stuff on the Sierra and the Fiesta sort of before I get a chance to do these videos. So check, check out the uh, latest Classic Ford magazine. And um, yeah, that's it. Um, any comments? As I said, I'm still not too sure about those arches, whether or not I can be bothered to tweak them about, cut them about and get them on the car. But um, if you think I should give that a go, then uh, yes, I'd be interested to get some feedback, whether you think that they look any better than the uh, old RS arches that I had on the car before. So yeah, I'll uh, catch up with you guys next time.